Dental Care for patients over 50. I'm here with Dr. Brandon O'Neill. He is the expert in dental. Dr. O'Neill, can you tell us where you're located and the dentistry you specialize in? Um, I'm located in Alpharetta, Georgia, 322 North Main Street in Alpharetta. Um, I am a general dentist, which means I kind of have the luxury of uh, working in all aspects of the, of the dental field. So we work in everything from family to cosmetic to implant to, uh, and restorative and dentures and everything else in between more or less. I have to admit, I've been a patient of Dr. O'Neill's for about seven to eight years. And when I came to Dr. O'Neill, I was in the on, early onset of periodontal disease. And the reason why that was occurring is one, I had been laid off my job and I didn't have dental ex uh, insurance. And two, I also had a bad experience with the dentist. Uh, that kind of turned me off or turned me away from coming to the dentist until I got to a place where I had a cavity. And then I had to be active and come see a dentist. And someone referred me to Dr. O'Neill, like I said, about eight years ago. And he's taken me from the onset of periodontal disease and giving me healthy mouth, healthy teeth. So today we're going to talk about the things we can do to be proactive about dental care as well as when we're in a situation and now we have issues, how do we address those issues? So the first question I have for you, Dr. O'Neill, is what are the most common issues you see with uh, patients who are over 50? Um, and, and I think in all patients we see the, the entire spectrum of, of needs. We see people that, um, that have extremely healthy mouths. We've seen some that are not as healthy, and we see some that are extremely unhealthy. Um, we see a lot of missing teeth, a lot of broken teeth, certain diseases. And, and so we try to make sure we uh, have a um, uh, treatment in mind to accommodate the individual, no matter what the circumstances are. When it comes to periodontal, am I saying that correctly? Just say, yeah, periodontal. Periodontal. Uh -huh. um, is there ever a situation where it's gone too far and you can't restore or you can't bring it back? Yes. The, the, um, periodontal disease basically is the, um, the supporting tissues, the, the bone and the gingiva and everything. Uh, they have receded and uh, the way that the analogy I like to use is kind of like a picket fence. So. The, the, the studs to the, to the fence have to be so far in, in the soil okay. for the fence to be sturdy. Uh, same thing with teeth. The, the teeth have their roots, and their roots are embedded in the bone. So as, if, as the bone atrophies or goes away, the teeth will start to kind of flap in the wind, if you will. Mm -hmm. So strong bone and gums um, uh, is what we're, what we're trying, to, trying to capture there. Okay. And like, are there stages that lead up to, hey, I'm at this breaking point and I have to do something right now? Or? Um, yeah, periodontal disease definitely comes in stages. So gingivitis is the, is the precursor, precursor to periodontal disease. Okay. So you have gingivitis first. That's where the, where the whole inflammatory process begins. Uh, what causes gingivitis? Um, well, Primarily, it's, it's, it's a result of not uh, cleaning effectively. Okay. Uh, and so what you're doing is you're allowing uh, things on the teeth and on the, on the gum area that your body does not like. And what it does is it's trying to fight off these, these pathogens, if you will. And it's basically sending the healthy blood cells and everything to come to that area to, to fight off the, the plaque and the film that's there. Okay, okay. And if, if, if that goes unchecked over time, then we'll get to early periodontitis. Okay. And so again, early periodontitis is when we're, when like, so when we take our probe, we're measuring. If you start to see it here now, this is about, this will probably be a four, somewhere right, right around here. Okay. So this, that's a little, I said, now this is probably a five. Uh, there's gonna be bleeding on probe and there'll be, uh, radiographic calculus. There'll be there'll be there'll be a, um, a cascade of things that are going on here. Okay. Um, and you can kind of see again. You'll see the, the the bone starting to recede nature for here, and that's really so. Can you come back from this? Absolutely. <clears throat> what will happen though? The bone usually does does not um, grow back, but the tissue attachment will occur. Oh, okay. So that that's why it's still it's still pretty good. So if you're in, in moderate to 
advanced periodontal disease, um, one of the, there, there are two effective, well, at least two effective ways of treating it. And I think the most common is osseous surgery. And now there's another procedure that's done with the laser. And what they will do with osseous surgery is they'll make an incision here along the gum lines and we'll reflect all that tissue away from the teeth. And then we'll go in and we'll be able to see where the, how far the disease has gone into the, the root area and we can kind of clean it that way. Uh, with the laser, however, we're able to take the laser and without laying a flap, without the surgical part of it, we're able to take the laser and insert, insert the probe into the sulcus there and uh, effectively um, target the, the pathogens that way also. So it's, it's, it's a much more comforting way of doing it with the laser, um, but they're both very effective. Once this is discovered, how long is the treatment we're looking at? How long? the whole process to restore us back to the healthy home. It's, it's one of those things you can't, you have to take each case individually. I've, uh, I've treated people where we have severe periodontitis and we have a tooth that's lost 90% of its bone, but we're able to keep it. Okay. Uh, I've seen cases where uh, that are a lot more aggressive and we, we, we're, they're deemed hopeless. We have to take the teeth out and look at doing either um, some sort of prosthesis to, to restore their, their function back. What is a cost, you would say, to restore you back from bad to now good? It's such a broad range. Can, we, we can be looking at something as local as one tooth, uh -huh. or we can be looking at something as, as general as the entire tongue. Right. The back of your tongue. Yeah, the back of your tongue actually is How do you brush the back of your tongue? Uh, very methodically. <laughs> So you don't snap it down and okay. you know, cause you know bleeding that way. But you gotta remember, healthy growth comes in general do not bleed. So if you have any questions you want to ask us about your dental health, then please email us at the